Hi, my name is Rob, and today we're going to go over Palo Alto Networks RBAC administration using Microsoft MPS and AD Group membership. So if you ever set up a network device, you know it starts off with local accounts, but it really isn't manageable or sustainable in a large enterprise environment. So we can use features like RBAC to give different users and groups and then different experiences when they log into the device. Maybe they get access to some areas of the configuration where they're able to see some logs in other areas, but it doesn't need to be universal across the enterprise. So what I'm gonna go through today is just a high level overview of what RBAC is, list out the dependencies for the solution. Then I'm gonna give you a real world RBAC scenario followed by what the Palo vendor specific attributes are and how we're gonna use them. Next, we're gonna go through the configuration steps. We're gonna start an Active Directory, then we're gonna go through Microsoft's MPS, and finally, the PanOS configuration. After that, we're gonna test our configurations with the, our three test users, and then I'm gonna show you how to go through the logs so that we can validate everything's working correctly. So RBAC really just enables you to give different pri privileges and responsibilities of control to different users. In Palo Alto Networks, it really gets broken down into two different areas. You have admin roles, which gives you access to things like settings, logs, reports within Panorama or the firewall context. And we also have device group and templates administration, which are defined by access domain. It's a combination of those admin roles and those access domains where we can grant privileges to certain users. Say you have a cloud security team and a perimeter team, but they don't need to be able to see the device is the other one to manage. We can control that and as well as what they can do on the devices by using RBAC. So in this scenario, we're going to need to have uh, a Strata or Panorama up and running. I'm gonna be using PanOS 10.02, but it's pretty much supported on and any software that's on end of life today. You're also gonna need Active Directory up and running. So that's where our user authentication database is gonna be. I'm using Windows Server 2019. But once again, this should be available on any of the Windows servers running. We're also going to require an instance of network policy and access server. And then we're going to need a machine certificate for the MPS server to be able to configure it to do uh, PEEP MS chat V2. And then optional, but I, and I'm going to show you in this video how we can use an XML viewer to look at the MPS logs. I'm going to be using Notepad++ with the XML tools plugin, but you're more than welcome to use whatever you feel comfortable with. So in our real world scenario, on the left hand side, we have um, what could be a, a typical enterprise topology where we start with our enterprise level, and then that's broken out between cloud, our, our lab for testing, our perimeter and remote sites. And then even within the cloud instance, we have things like AWS, Azure, GCP, where we might have different specialists. So on the right hand side, we're going to show how we're going to map our users in this test scenario to these different areas, just so that we can see how the, the access domains and roles work. But this can be extrapolated out to any of your users or your scenarios that you need to across your enterprise. So Alice, who's part of the cloud security team, needs access to anything deployed in AWS, GCP, or Azure. Bob is strictly a lab engineer, so he's going to be only accessing those devices, and Tom, who's going to function as our escalation engineer, needs access to everything. The way we're going to be able to control what they have access to are the use of vendor-specific attributes. Palo Alto Networks has 10 total that they have, but only five of them that are definable. The six through 10 are really used for accounting purposes. So the ones that we're going to be looking at today from Panorama side are three and four. But for, if you're looking to do firewall administration, you'd also need one and two. And we can send all these to, it doesn't matter if we're sending them to the firewall or to Panorama, it knows only which values it uses. So you can configure once and just have it uniform for all those devices you need to access. So one is the, the admin role on the, the firewall itself. Two is where you would define what visas they have access to if you're broken down into different visas. So three is used to tell Panorama which admin role or um, that you want the, the user configured for. And then four is going to be that access domain. And this is where I was talking about it can either be a panorama admin or it can be um, a device group and template. So the first step for we need to do is configure Active Directory. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three different security groups. I'm going to do a PA cloud security read write group, a PA lab engineer read write group, and a PA escalation engineer read write group. Then I'm going to take our three test users, Alice, Bob, and Tom, and add them to each of those groups. So I'm going to open up Active Directory Users and Computers, which is under Administration Tools. We're going to go ahead and this will be whatever in your organization where you keep your groups. To keep it simple, I'll just keep it under Users. I'm going to go to Group. And I wrote these down in Notepad just to make it easy to make sure I don't mess up the names. So we have our Cloud Security. We have our lab engineer. And then we have our escalation engineer. All right, so once I've added each of those, I'm going to go ahead and create a user or add the user to it, sorry. So Alice was our cloud security team member. Our lab was Bob. I'm sure there's only one Bob in your organization, so that'll be really easy to identify. And then our escalation engineer is Tom, an equally unique name. All right, so once we've added all those to uh, the users to the groups that we want, we're, we're all set from an Active Directory side. All right, next we are going to install and configure the Microsoft MPS server. First thing we need to do is install the server rule. After that, we're going to define our radius clients. So in this case, it's going to be Panorama. I'm going to use its management IP address as well as a shared secret that both devices are going to know. Once I have that installed, I'm going to define the network policy. So that includes matching the request sent by the radius client. I'm going to use the IPv4 address but there's a bunch of other criteria you can use. Then I'm going to select the EAP type it's going to be using. We're going to use EAP peep with MS chat v2, which does require a server certificate uh, that's trusted by the Panorama server. So I'm going to show you how to do that, as well as to find the VSA attributes that we went over earlier in this presentation. So, I'm going to go ahead and quickly give you a video of the install process. The first thing we need to do is open up Server Manager. Once we get that open, we're going to go down to add a role and feature. We're going to go ahead and click Next on this screen. We're going to go ahead and click Next again. And we're going to select the server we're installing it to, which is this one. Then from the list, we're going to go down to Network Policy and Access Server. And we're going to go ahead and select to add the tools as well. Go ahead and click Next. I'm going to go ahead and click Next and Next again. I'm going to select to go ahead and reboot the server because it's a non-production server. Definitely don't check that if it is a production server. And then click Finish. So it's going to go through the process. I recorded this earlier so we didn't have to sit through the whole thing. I know how fun it is to watch software install, but highly recommend it if you got cycles to burn. I do not. So we're going to go to our freshly installed NPS server. First thing I'm going to show you is I am under the certificates under the Microsoft Management Console for the local computer. And under the personal certificates, I have my services01 learning for fun.net. Boots issued to, which is a server, and it's issued by the CA01. So this is going to be the trusted CA that I need to build in my uh, Palo Alto profile later. And it's also going to be the certificate I use to identify the MS Chat V2. So we're going to go down to Administrative Tools, Network Policy Server. Once this opens up, the first thing that I like to do is adjust my accounting just to help with troubleshooting. So we're going to go ahead and do configure accounting. 
to keep it easy, I am going to do a text file. And I'm going to keep everything checked. I am going to put it in a special folder on the C drive just to make it easy for me to install. More than welcome to put it wherever you like. Click next and next again, and I am finished. So we can see that we've configured for the log file properties for the file and the NPS log. So I am going to uncheck if logging failed, discard connection requests. I don't, in, in my environment, want to discard stuff just because it can't log. All right, after that, we're going to define our radius client. So by friendly name, I can use DNS name or I can use an IP address. Let's use a DNS. And then I'm not going to do a shared profile secret. I am going to do a manual one. This is going to be that super secret key that you keep between you and the server or the radius client. Sorry. All right. Once that's defined, go down to my policies. We are not going to do any connection request uh, forwarding. Everything we have set up here is going to just go to the local computer. So we are going to build network policy. So there's two out of the box. Both of them are set to deny. So ours that we build are going to go above that. We're going to click new and we're going to call this cloud security. We'll just do PA in front of it. Panorama. All right, the condition is not going to be this access client IPv4. That's who's making the request to the uh, the access client making the request to the radius client. We're going to go down here to the client IPv4 address. That is the radius client. So that's going to be the address of the Panorama server. So this is going to be 192. The IP address. Once we get that done. I'm also going to find that Windows security group we created. And this one was sort of a PA, and it is our cloud security. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. We are going to uncheck the accesses determined by dial in. We are going to access, allow access granted. The EAP type, I'm going to deselect these. I'm going to click add protected EAP. And then I'm going to go in and make sure that it has the certificate that I mentioned early selected, as well as we are using secure password EAP MS chat V2. When we go to edit, I'm going to allow my clients to change password. Even after it's expired, you're more than welcome to uncheck that or whatever makes sense for your environment. We're going to hit next. We're not going to have any configuration constraints, but we are going to go down to our vendor specific attributes. So we're going to click add from the drop down. We're going to go to custom and then vendor specific down here. This is going to be, I believe, code 26. Yeah, actually, number 26. After that, we're going to click add. And we aren't able to load the Palo Alto dictionary that I know of into the NPS server. So we just enter them manually. So this is that vendor code that I mentioned earlier. And that should be 25461. And it does conform to radius RFC specifications. And this is where we did that one, three, and four that I mentioned, right? Out of the five that we can define. So three is the role. And we are going to say it's a string. And we're going to put in here device admin. This is one we're going to define on the panorama device itself. All right. And then we're going to hit OK. We're going to add one more. It's going to be the same code, 25461 for the vendor. And we're going to go in here. The attribute now is going to be four and string. And this is going to be that admin uh, context. So this is going to be cloud. Go ahead and close. We can see we see both those values in there. When we use the debug or the Wireshark capture later, we'll be able to see how they map back. This is just a brief summary of what we did. We're going to go ahead and hit finish. Move this up and then we're going to get started on our next one. We're going to go ahead and duplicate that because it's easy. 
All right. And we are going to call this one lab. And the conditions this time, instead of being the cloud group, we are going to make it the lab engineer. All right. We're going to remove the cloud one. Hit OK. Still no constraints. Our settings, uh, besides the EAP type, then under settings for vendor specific, we're going to click on it, hit edit. So we still want the device admin because that's what's going to tell um, Panorama to uh, not do a Panorama admin account, but a device admin account. But instead of cloud, we're going to change this one to lab. All right. Hit OK. Go ahead and enable that one. We're going to go ahead and duplicate this one. So this one will be our escalation engineer. And go in here, remove that group, add our escalation engineer security group we created. And for this one, for the vendor specific attribute, we are going to remove the lab because we're just going to have it be the built in super user for the role. And so we're going to come down here. It is all lowercase for the built in accounts or the built in roles. And then we're going to hit apply. And that is all we need to do for the NPS side. Next, we're going to go over the configuration on the PanOS side. There's five steps we need to do. So we need to define the admin roles if it's needed. So the super user one we did for the escalation here is built in. But the other ones that we defined are manual and they're not going to be uh, panorama admin. They're going to be the device group ones. We're next going to have to define the access domains. So that's going to be what you want them to have access to, such as the device groups, the templates, the device context, things of that nature. Uh, after that, we're going to create the radius server profile. This is where we tell it how to communicate back to the MPS server, what we want to do with it, right? Like things like, do we want the outer layer to be anonymous? So with MPS, you have to use a forwarding profile to be able to do that. In our environment, I don't need it, so I'm not going to do an anonymous outer layer. We then need to identify the certificate profile to use. That's the certificate on the MPS server that it was selected to use the Deep MS Chat V2 for. And then the next two steps are we just create the authentication profile. This links it back to the radius uh, server profile we defined and how we want it used and who we want it applied to. So we're just going to have it be applied to all users since we're doing the group membership back in AD. And last, we just assign it to our, our management profile for the authentication settings. And we are good to go. So I'm in my Panorama instance right now. And if we go down here to certificates, here I have my CA01. That's that certificate authority. I can see because it's checked this uh, certificate authority box that issued my services01 server or the MPS server certificate. What I've done is created a uh, server profile where I've added that root certificate to it, the root CA, sorry, to it to allow it to accept those connections. And that's important because that's where we're going to be able to map back and make sure we're authenticating to the right server. So we're going to go down to our radius profiles, our server profile, click add, and I'm going to call this Microsoft MPS profile. I'm extremely original, I know. And then I am going to uncheck the make outer identity anonymous, but I am going to select that certificate profile I told you about that has our uh, root CA cert in it. And then I'm going to define the server. So this is going to be services01. I'm just going to give it an IP address. Put in that super secret key. Mine's definitely not 12345. That would be too obvious. And then you just repeat this same step for any other server you want to add to it. 
Once we've done that, we are going to go up to our access domains. And we're gonna go ahead and click add. So from here, we had these match back up to what we were defining as those VSAs for number four. So I'm gonna have one called cloud, where I'm only allowing access to my cloud environment. The templates are gonna be the templates that I want them to have access to. So I want them to have the Azure, I want them to have the AWS, I want them to have the GCP. I also want them to have the networking, layer three VM, and that's it. So device context, I'm not gonna select any of these because I don't want uh, our cloud team to be able to go directly into the devices with these credentials. And so that's all I need to do for that one. I'm going to create the lab one next, and I'll come down here and I'll only select my lab. Now for the lab, I'm gonna give um, pretty much just the lab template for them to see, and then, I will allow them to jump down in the context of the, the lab firewalls. So after that, we're going to do our admin rules. We you notice that uh, super user isn't here because it is a built-in one, but we are going to add, I believe it was device admin. And this is where we select the device group and template. And so I'm just going to have it allow them access to everything that we've defined under that access domain. If you wanted them to have read only, you could go in and when you click on it, if it's an object that can be read only, it moves to that little lock. Click on it again, no access. Click on it again, it goes back to the checkbox. We don't have to define the content switch down here because we are defining it through our radius VSAs. And that's really all there is to it from that part. So we're gonna go back in and from here, we're gonna do our authentication profile. I'm gonna call this, so yes, profile. We're gonna select the type, which is our radius, our server profile that we built earlier. That's the Microsoft NPS profile. And I don't need to change anything else here. Under advanced, this is where I'm going to select all users. Because once again, I'm controlling everything based on Active Directory users and groups. So having it forward the authentication isn't a big deal. It's still going to get that access allow or deny from back from the NPS server. Once I've defined that, I'll go under Setup, come down to Authentication Settings, it's a little gear icon, and move this from None to our Microsoft NPS Auth Profile we just created. Once I'm done there, I'm gonna hit okay. And then I will uh, commit to Panorama. So that's where I made the changes. You would do this exact same scenario under your device templates if you wanted to also push out and apply down to your individual firewalls. It's just uh, at that point, we only need the VSA one for the admin role, and then two if you have it broken down in different VSAs, which I don't have here today. All right, now that everything is committed, I'm going to go ahead and log in as Tom since he had the best view as an escalation engineer. And it failed. So it's a good segue into looking at the logs. If I go back over here to the policy server. I can see that I forgot to enable uh, his his rule. So I'll just right click and enable that. If we we're gonna go look at the log to troubleshoot which policy he was hitting, this is a log folder I had earlier. Go ahead and open it up, scroll down to the bottom. Not the most user-friendly thing in the world. So we will just go ahead and grab these two. And then I'm gonna open up Notepad++. Set the coding or the language to XML if you haven't, just to make it easy. And then finally, I'm going to use XML tools to do pretty print. Makes it really easy to figure everything out. So I can see the policy name, since it wasn't matching mine, was connect to other access servers. And if we look, that's down here at the bottom, basically a catch all deny. 
And that was because it wasn't matching the group he was in with any of these other rules. Now that it's enabled, we should be able to go back and test it out. So let's try again. All right, so we can see I'm now logged in as Tom and it's creating my administration session. So I don't know if you're able to see it, but in the syslog, we can see that the outer header was Tom. This is that anonymous thing that we disabled, but more importantly, we can see the admin role was super user was pushed to him. So I can actually go in and I can see all the device groups, uh, everything, the cloud, the lab, and nothing to see here one, um, pretty much everything. So he is a super user of Panorama. So we're gonna go log out and then come back in with Alice. So Alice, should only have access to cloud security. And all these accounts are in AD, nothing is, is local on Panorama. I get a much different view when I go to my device group. Notice I can only see the things under that uh, that area, right? So all enterprise cloud, and then the three cloud instances I gave her access to. When I go under my templates, it's only the templates that she had access to. So the stacks, as well as I, she only had access to the layer layer three networking one. Hey, okay. so, and when we go to the logs. She can only see logs from the cloud instances, none of the other device groups on the network itself. When we come up here to the top left, there is nothing for her to select because we didn't allow her to have any context. So finally, we're gonna log in with Bob, who's the lab admin, and he does have access to different context. All right, Bob was authenticated. We're gonna go over to policies. We can see that Bob only has the lab area. And then under the templates, he can only see the lab template stack that he was given access to. So if we go up here to context, we do see those two lab firewalls that I mentioned. And that's why he can switch context into them because we did do that under the uh, admin domain. Now that we've finished our test accounts logging in to validate our NPS profiles, we're gonna look a little bit at the logs. So on the firewall, if we go over to monitor and then logs and system, you can see the auth, the type of auth and you'll have your event, right? So in this case, it was a successful authentication of a user, Mary using MS Chat V2, and the admin role she was given was super reader. But pretty straightforward uh, for the firewall itself, so that probably goes back to one of those admin roles that was defined for read-only access. We can also look at the event viewer on the MPS. It's really easy to read, but it doesn't show any of the VSAs. So if you're trying to troubleshoot what's being sent to the firewall, if it's different, as far as the name of what you define and what's defined there, it gets a little bit tricky. We can look at the log file itself. I did that a little earlier when I was troubleshooting Tom not being able to log in because the policy wasn't authenticated. Those three blue dots, uh, look, they are associated with the, the vendor specific attributes that are sending back. So if we look at it, you'll see it's quad zeros and six, three, seven, five. That is the, the Palo Alto manufacturer ID. The next two digits is going to be the, the number that we did. So we talked about earlier about one, three, and four. So I had all three of them set. 
And then the next two digits is going to be the length in hex of the value. And everything following that is the value. And I'll show you how to decode that. Finally, we can just run Wireshark. And Wireshark will do all the decoding for us, but you have to have Wireshark installed on your server. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So first thing I'll do is bring up a uh, vent viewer. Go under custom logs, server roles, network policy and access server. Always quick retrieving log. So from here, we can see the various different users, right? So Alice authenticated. It was a successful authentication. And we can see uh, which events it was matching for the network policy name. But we don't see any vendor specific attributes. And the same for, for Bob and then Tom himself. So if we're going to want to go ahead and look at that, we're going to bring our file up. We'll open it back up. Scroll down to the bottom and grab probably just grab these ones right here. We're going to drop this into Wireshark. Once again, do the pretty print. We'll just find one with the VSAs down here. All right, so here's one with two. And what I'm going to do is bring this over into a new window. So we'll drop part off this okay so this is what i was mentioning with the separation so these first this first byte or uh, bit of information is the palo alto uh, manufacturer id this next two digits right here is going to be the number so this is the vsa number we talked about earlier so this is sending three and four so the admin role and then the access domain. Well, the two following uh, spaces are for the length of what's here. And then these are going to be hex encoded. So if you just highlight it, go to converter and then hex to ASCII, we can see what it's actually sending. So we see that this was the device admin as well as the lab. So this would have been for Bob. And if we go back, we can see that it was for Bob. All right, the last one is to run Wireshark. So we're just going to launch Wireshark. Filter for the radius up here and then i will do my logon request so we are going to do do alice all right we see alice successfully authenticated go alice now if we look in wireshark we'll go ahead and stop this what we are looking for is the, let the accept. Yep, let's see accept. Everything else was the, all the back and forth communication for that EAP request. So if we look at, we see two were sent here. So that is the 26 for the, for the vendor specific attribute. We see that Palo Alto was here. And looking back at our decode down here, we see when we hover over that, that goes back to uh, what we were talking about earlier. So Palo Alto, we see right there, the uh, device admin was sent. And those, that's what we decoded. So as far as what else was sent, we see that it was the cloud. So we see that she was set the cloud, and we know Alice is the cloud administrator. So we can see both of these real quick without having to do any special manipulation or conversion from hex to ASCII right in Wireshark. So it's very useful 
but it is harder to get access to on, on most servers. With that, I just want to say thank you for sticking with me. If you have any questions, let me know. This was how to configure it on a Microsoft MPS server, but it's going to be the same exact thing if you're using a, a different Radius server or even if you're doing TACX. It's all about being able to map it to the admin role and then the access domain for your users. Thank you.